Hey, what's up, you guys? We're currently recording this video at like 11.48. And this is King of Olympus. Y'all, this has been a long time since we recorded one of these, man. Like, the last thing I think I recorded for you all was about another topic. I'm not sure off the top of my head right now, but I know it's been a while. So, today we're talking about um two topics that I wanted to talk about today. Excuse me. But, um... Two of the topics that I want to talk about today on Council of Olympus is the Xbox Project Keystone Project and another topic is Starfield. So, you know, we've been going through the week and we've been getting news here and there. There's a couple of more topics I want to talk about, but I'll say that for a later time. They're recent topics, but I know they're going to probably be old when I get to them due to the fact of I'm just trying to cover a certain number of topics while we're here so um let's get started so we know that xbox has a bit of a history with code naming each of their projects like project durango was the xbox one and project scarlet was xbox series s and series x series x and series s i mean so with that being said there has been a new project to come into the fold recently if you guys have been keeping up with the news it was uncovered by the data miner Taro Alhonen if I'm pronouncing that correct I'm, I apologize if I'm getting that wrong but he has um gotten claims that he found a piece of data in a data mine that he has found in Xbox's system the name of the project is called Project Keystone so many of you guys may have probably already looked into it, probably speculated on it, probably even went as far as to just saying like, hey, this is what this is exactly. This is what this is now. This is what this is today. So um, I understand that a lot of people have been speculating about it. I've been kind of speculating myself, but as we all know, like there's many speculations going on. Like, some people have speculated that the that Project Keystone might be a new system that links together the gap between the Series S and the Series X. Kind of like a midway system in between. Um, Kind of say somewhat like a hybrid system. But not in a hybrid system sense, like the Switch. More like a system that's kind of mid-tier. Kind of like you would have an iPhone 13, an iPhone Pro, and an iPhone Pro Max sort of situation. So, um, it's kind of a situation where, um, I guess the Series S is supposed to be low tier and the, the supposed project, the supposed project Keystone is going to be mid tier while the X is going to be high tier. It's going to be like PC stance system so with that sound it sounds good on paper it sounds really really good when you think of it kind of like you got the situation where you kind of got a, a a Wii right here and a Wii U being the high tier and then the switch being in like somewhere in the middle due to a hybrid system but um I highly doubt that it's a new system right now because of the fact that uh the Xbox the newest Xbox just came out like the beginning of the, well, no, not the beginning, but the end of really 2020, beginning of 2021. So with that being said, I highly doubt that it's a new system. If, if at the most, if it's not a new system, it's probably an improvement on something. Which brings us to the next speculation that, speculation number two, people have been saying that the new project might be the revival of the Xbox Connect line. With the Xbox Connect line, I feel that the Xbox Connect, the Xbox Connect line would be way more, um, way more a plausible theory. Due to the fact that, um, with the Connect, we haven't really seen much since the Xbox One. So, you know, it was introduced for the Xbox 360. Then it kind of transferred to the Xbox One. And then now we don't really have a set Connect. But the fact of, I think, 
Don't quote me on it, but I think that the Xbox One camera can actually go to the Series S or the Series X. So, I'm not for sure, but I know that every accessory that... I think, yeah, well, yeah, it could, it could, it could. Because of the simple fact that, um, I think in a, in the conference for the Xbox, they were saying that all accessories for the Xbox One can go, can be pushed forward to the Series S and Series X. So, it, it can. Um... The Connect, like I said before, is more plausible. I feel as if the Connect line, a new Connect line, would be good in a way. But as we've known over history, the Connect kind of over time phased its way out. Um, like I say, when it says it phased itself out, it's kind of went to the point where it's just, oh, it was fun and everything is fun. Like the Connect has always been fun. But the fact of it flies up under so many people's radars due to the fact that, okay, it's more like just movement motion games. And it's not really something that most people would play serious. It's kind of like the equivalent to like the, the Wii Sports games. So most people, to get most people back to like the connect line it would have to be something that people would want to play 24 7 7 days a week it has to be something where sort of kind of like it has to be an integration into a game for people to play it not really um not really a requirement but just more of an optional type of thing um one of the things that i could probably think of would be like a good integration is like an example of a good integration, honestly, would be with the, um, with the connect, with the Alien Isolation game. If you made noise, the alien could find you. I think that was, would be a good way to implement the connect into the new Series X and Series S system. But I think the games that would probably be more perfect for that implementation would kind of be the more narrative based games like we've seen we've seen a function like that in the until dawn game where you had to hold the controller straight to make your character hold their breath and i feel like the same thing could be said for you know the um connect so i feel like that revival would be great for xbox however um i feel like if the Xbox was to go forward with that, they would probably fuse it with the, probably have the interest of going into the VR market. But we've heard that Xbox doesn't really want to go into the VR market. They're more like want to focus on just gaming and gaming in general without the, all the extra gimmicks and the extras. But if they were to break into the VR market, the VR market, the uh, VR system with the with the camera would be very, 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 very great. Um, however, I feel as with project with the project Hololens with um Microsoft's Hololens, it'll be a bit more expensive unless they're making it for commercial. Which, more than likely, they are making it for commercial use. Um, because the HoloLens is more like professional use. And they're like a thousand, I think they're like a thousand and something per headset. So, they'll probably make something like the HoloLens, but it'll probably be more commercial, more gaming. And it'll probably be about priced the same around the PSVR 2. So, that would probably be good, in a way. So, that'll be a pretty plausible way. So... With all this being said, my speculation for Project Keystone is I feel that the project is altogether something new, but I feel like it's going to be built on familiar ground. Because um, looking at the reports and thinking about the reports that I've seen back in 2021, um, in mid-2021, they had news, take all of this with a grain of salt because I don't know how much this news has probably changed since 
the last time it was announced. So there was news that Xbox wanted to get into the the smart TV market. So not exactly making their own TV, but it was just the fact of what they wanted to do was they had a vision of bringing cloud gaming and game pass to an actual smart TV app and put it on smart TV. So it'll be more available to all Xbox and non Xbox owners. So with that being said, that would have been good for marketing due to the fact of you might have people who want to get into Xbox gaming, but they can't do to budgets. So what better way of doing this by making an Xbox app for TVs and just having them buy the bundle with the Game Pass and the controller and they can just plug it up to their TV and connect. So I feel that was like a way smarter decision. I feel like Keystone is exactly just that. I feel as um I feel that Keystone is basically just that project is just yet to be announced because Phil Spencer was even going as far as to saying that he wanted to release a streaming stick for the Xbox. He um he wanted to make a streaming stick that would go into people's TVs and they can just play the Xbox from there, just get a controller and game pass. So I feel that um with xCloud being improved and um, Game Pass is coming through with very good strides. I feel that it's more plausible. It's probably way more plausible that Xbox is probably preparing Keystone as this more, more of a big shift towards um, cloud gaming. I feel that Keystone is going to probably be the next evolution in the Xbox lineup. It's going to probably either be a streaming stick or an app that goes on TVs. And they're going to probably fix and improve everything that's under the hood for xCloud. And just all pushes onto TVs. And it's going to be a win-win for Xbox. You know, how can they lose? So, I feel that Spencer has a very, very, very good vision. And the developers at Xbox have a really good vision on where to take the Xbox next. I feel that as if um, Xbox is just always have been on the horizon of this, especially with them being, you know, backed up by all the subsidiaries of um, Microsoft. And it's just kind of like, with all this being said, you know, like I said, how can they lose? So on to other news, we see that Bethesda has gotten, letting us get another peek into um, Starfield with their new episode into the Starfield episode two. So we started to see new things. Like we started seeing, um, new companions, factions mentioned everything under the sun, basically. So, um, I think I want to start with the factions mentioned due to the fact of, um, all of these factions are really, really great. Um, I've, they have the United Colonies, which is basically like the United States takes over space. Basically, it's just like all of the U.S. is in space. Then you have the um, Free Star Collective, which is basically like a space western, basically cowboys in space. It's just the wild, wild west in space, which is pretty good. I think I like the idea of the Free Star Collective. It's they're kind of like the um, kind of like the rugged guys who just taking what's theirs in space. And then you have the Raijin Industries, which is basically cyberpunk in space, from what I've seen from the concept art. It's kind of like um, Arasaka in space. So, and then you also have the Crimson Fleet, which is basically just pirates in space. So all of these different um, factions, I know there probably might be more due to the fact of how Bethesda works. So with these colonies, I feel like it's going to be some good, 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 good gameplay between these colonies. And as mentioned, they also said that you can also play as like a double agent in each of these colonies. <laughs> Excuse me. So 
um they went as far as to saying that um as a double agent you could tell what other colonies are doing or you can tell your boss what other colonies can do do or what they can do or you can ship them information of what the colonies can do or you can just play it safe and just go as your role inside with them and just be with, up under their rule so i find that pretty cool it's kind of like um starfield is kind of playing the field of the comparison that i really want to make is um it's kind of as if they're using the system for fallout and skyrim and oblivion but they're kind of mashing them up all into one like the skill trees like um your character can actually have traits um you can customize them how they want you can customize their pronouns it's kind of it's kind of like they're mixing those together but it's like they're throwing in a little bit of the outer worlds into it the worlds are more like um kind of like it kind of i've noticed that the color scheme and kind of the feel of the game kind of takes things away from nasa a lot of um space stations that we have in space it's kind of like it's kind of just fusing everything we know both pop culture and gaming together and i kind of really love this game like i can't wait to actually get my hands on it because i'm really trying to scratch an rpg itch that i have but um it's really good how it's um kind of marketing itself I kind of love the fact that um that the way the lore kind of sets it up it kind of just the game kind of sets you up as this I guess this unknown kind of astronaut I don't know if you're gonna have your story a little piece of your story with you like we did in Skyrim where we were kind of like the sky the um we were kind of like the dragonborn and we just went through the game kind of really figuring things out but um from what from what um howard has said he said that um we're basically writing our own story we're basically just writing our own story in the stars so from this from what this is saying from my understanding i guess you start off as really this unknown astronaut and you're just going through space just making yourself known it's like you're becoming like you're creating your own legend you're basically becoming a night city legend if i can say it like that so with that being said you can also take companions along with you for the ride um one of the companions that we actually see even though it was like eight seconds vasco so what we see from vasco is he's kind of like a um he's kind of a robot but the way that um the team at bethesda is working they're working to make every single npc that you kind of carry along as a follower they kind of make them mashing them into like more than human they start to question your motives they start to um like and dislike what you do they kind of side with what topics is this it's kind of basically what we saw in fallout 4 basically so everything of that matter is just exactly like it is kind of the game is going to be kind of classic bethesda but everything is going to be all their previous games racked up to 10 so everything is going to be basically a whole new advancement of everything else so it's pretty good to see pretty pretty good i'm really excited about it and um speaking of rpgs another one that i'm really excited about is hogwarts legacy i really 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 want to get my hands on that i love i love the harry potter series and I just feel like that's another one that I have to get my hands on besides Starfield. I think number one priority for um number one priority for RPGs right now is mostly Starfield. Um with that being said, I feel that um 
Elden Ring and Starfield is gonna really have most of my attention this um this season. So with with all those games kind of lined up, I think I'm gonna rehop back into um Valhalla, and I'm gonna also just play a lot of Starfield and a lot of Elden Ring until we see until we see a lot more of um Starfield. <laughs> um, I really just. I'm really, really excited for Starfield. I really am. Like, I'm just in shock right now because I never really thought a new RPG would come along this, like, this quick. I always thought that, um, I always thought that I would have to wait a little bit longer for some more RPGs, like, that are just that good. Um, I've really kind of been just playing through Skyrim. Haven't made my way to the anniversary edition yet, but I'm really trying to get my hands on it. But with all of this being said, I want to tell you guys thank you for the show. I know it's been a long time since I made one of these, and I will keep y'all posted as I can. And I just want to tell y'all peace and have a good day.